of Oxford, distinguished members of the Ox Oxford Union, other dignitaries in attendance, and ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I am the only eight division world boxing champion in history, having won 11 major world titles, ranging from flyweight, which has an eight stone limit, to super welterweight, which has an 11 stone limit. My tailor has been kept very busy throughout my career, <laughs> adjusting the waistband of my trunks. I have fought some of the best fighters in history. And yet, I have to admit, as I stand before you, I intimidated when I think of the kind of main event headliners who face you over the years. Sir Winston Churchill, American President Reagan, Nixon and Carter, Mary Teresa, Dalai Lama, and, the, and Sir Elton John. <clears throat> and here am I, Emmanuel the Pidran Pacquiao, standing before you armed with just the equivalent of a sixth form education. And in this guy's respect for what your group and your university represent, and um, a pretty fair left hook. <laughs> if this give and take today were a tale of the tape, I would be a perf uh, respectful underdog. But be careful, I'm not that easy to floor. When I received your gracious invitation, I asked myself, what could I talk about that could possibly interest you? What could Manny Pacquiao say that would be of any impact, much more utility to the, to the men and women who enjoy the highest standards of instruction of, at Oxford? The answer came fast. I know what I should speak about. Something very few among you can claim to know about my education, Certainly non-traditional, non-formal, largely unstructured. <clears throat> I will call it my education in the open university of life. It is a matter of record that I only had uh, traditional formal sc schooling until secondary school, grade 12. It was only recently that I reached the university level through the alternative education program. We, would, we were dirt poor. I had to work since the age of seven to help my mother feed my uh, three siblings and me. My days, uh, many days, I was lucky to have one full meal. On days when we had no food, I would drink lots of water just to fill my stomach. And I remember um, when we were young, my younger brother crying, asking for food to my mother, and my mother uh, told us, just drink a lot of water uh, to survive, and tomorrow maybe we'll have food. So that's the, 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 the experience that I, I experienced when we were young. But my mind and spirit were never hungry. I read anything I could get my hands on. I even read the newspaper that my lunch or dinner came wrapped in. I read signs everywhere, even in moving vehicles. I learned measurements and weights by constantly reading the rates and tariffs at the warehouses where I work as a stiff door, a docker in our parlance. At night, when I could not sleep because of the cold, I would read the, the labels of the carton boxes that serve as my bed on the street pavement. The movements of the clouds, the tent of the horizon, and the clarity of the stars taught me when morning was about to come. And for me, morning did come, warm, bright, and simply amazing. I listen in what, what can be achieved if you have determination, if you, if you ignore the odds against you, and as you are taught here at this magnificent institution, never, ever quit. Think of David and Goliath, and look at me. I'm not very big, and I never had five smooth stones to throw at any obstacle. But determination is a power tool. I won a lot of fights. Since 2016, I have been a sitting member of the, the Philippine Senate, having received the direct vote of over 16 million Filip, uh, Filipinos. 
As such, I participate in debates that result in the passage of legislation, legislation which determine the course of our country's history and, and directly the world's. I don't fault anyone who views me as singular, singularly ill-equipped for this role. Instead, I ask, is there anyone more knowledgeable than this humble civil servant about the hardships incident to the way of life of the majority of our people? Who among my colleagues has faced poverty face-to-face -face from birth? Whose life's work has it been to battle illiteracy? In crafting effective laws, there is no better guide than the pulse of the masses. I may not have financial equity. I may not have, I may not be historically fluent. I may not even be socially adept, but I am philosophically rooted in my personal adversities, which morally bind me to the general struggle of our people. I am a fighter and I will always be a fighter, not just, not just because it is my profession. I was a fighter long before I first set foot in a boxing ring. All my life I have been fought to live. Every single day in my youth, I fought for survival. Now I do it and get paid for it. Then I was lucky to get a piece of bread for it. But how my struggles of any value to the Filipinos? It cannot feed or clothe all of them. The ma no matter how much I give financially, hundreds of thousands more remain wanting. In 2013, in the aftermath of Category 5 Super Typhoon Haiyan, locally remembered as Yolanda, the deadliest typhoon to devastate my country, leaving a record of more than 10,000 dead I went to Tacloban and visited a nightmare. The place was a virtual ghost town. Everyone had lost someone from their family. Others, their entire family. No property was spared. There were bodies everywhere. There was no food, no water, no electricity. Its face, I look into, bore the same expression, defeat. Not a single person there thought that they could ever recover from that tragedy. I thought to myself, I can give millions, as have many other donors from all over the world, but no amount of money can give these people hope. I too fought against despair. But then I had an idea. We set up a makeshift basketball court and I started shooting some hoops. Then one boy picked up uh, the ball after one of my shots and tried a shot. Soon there were enough for, of us to have five on five match, and we did. The smiles, the laughter, the hopes of joy of those boys during the, the game are memories forever each in my heart. To have lost everything overnight, including parents, siblings, friends, but to still have the ability to rise above one's person loss in each, and reach out to your fellow man. Even just in play, to find joy together, there, at that point, in those victims' eyes, I found hope. Those boys who had nothing left gave me hope. By the way, <clears throat> by the way, I would like to thank uh, the United uh, the United Kingdom uh, for donating more than sixty million uh, pound for the type one victims. Um, thank you, thank you very much to, your, to all your support and the dona donation. Four years later, I would see the same physical and societal devastation in Marawi. Our beautiful city of the south was reduced to ruins by civil strife. Death and destruction broke the hearts and backs of its residents, but not their spirit. One year later, Marawi is now under rehabilitation. 
This and other exper experiences like this motivated me to answer the call of public service. I believe in all humility that my life is just a snapshot. It is a glorified blow up of what millions of Filipinos live through uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. The hardships, the challenges, the back-breaking, hope extinguishing, despair. Yet, through the ashes of uh, destruction, the Filipino always manages to rise up and fight another day. I believe that I was born for a purpose and a distant, in distant to serve as an inspiration for the average Filipino in the rest of the world, to fight, to rise above adversity, to conquer and defy, and to embrace life in all its difficulties. Mani Pacquiao is the best fairy tale every Filipino could tell in retail to all generations yet to come. Mani Pacquiao's story, uh, story is incredible but true. Miracles do happen. Dreams do come true. Being poor does not mean one must die poor. Hard work and persistence will set you free from the shackles of poverty. But it is faith that will take you to the very top. And that's, that is Mani Pacquiao's story. So I look, so I ask you, all of you, to never lose faith in what you can do as human being. Believe in the loyalty of the family and believe in the Almighty God. It is not easy to believe in the power of one. But I ask, I ask you to look around you. Count the faces. Do the multiplication. And suddenly, we are a power of 50 or 100, or 1,000. You, with your education, determination, and faith, you can change the world. Thank you.